Welcome to Afro Space with me, Adetun Giomotola, and my co-host, Inyasha Grace. Today we have joining us from Egypt, the great Egypt, is a lady, a young lady by the name of, uh, sorry, Ala Mohatamed. Ala Mohatamed is the Anzisha Prize winner for 2020, and she's the first not African and Egyptian to win the grand prize of $25,000. Allah is the co-founder of Presto Deliveries. Presto Deliveries is a fast and efficient 24-hour service delivery that deals with customers that range from individuals as well as business people. Allah from her profile, LinkedIn profile, says that she's always had an entrepreneurial mindset. She's passionate about building and connecting communities with each other. She has a history of working in the logistics and supply chain industry, and she has community management skills in negotiation, entrepreneurship, public speaking, design thinking, and fundraising. And interestingly, Allah bit over a thousand people, over a thousand people to win this grand prize. Welcome to Afro Space Allah. Welcome to you guys. I'm so happy to be with you today. Thank you for this great introduction. <laughs> I really enjoyed hearing my uh, my bio from you. <laughs> mm. Very welcome. Yeah, I mean, Allah, that you know, your profile is so impressive. You're just 22 years old, and it reads like a 40 year old profile. Mm. So. Uh, you're doing some really amazing work there. And uh, just as Tunji has already highlighted, um, that you are the first ever North African and Egyptian to win the Anjisa Grand Prize. Um, and uh, this is in the course of its 10-year history. How do you feel about this very special prize? And um, also the fact that you have this pioneer status of being the first Egyptian to win the prize. Um, okay. Um... I'm very proud of what I have accomplished then now. Uh, it was a huge surprise for me to win the Anzisha Grand Prize. Mm. Uh, I remember um, Ragda Methat, an Egypt Egyptian fellow uh, from um, 20, uh, 2019 uh, cohort. She sent me a message uh, earlier uh, the gala event day and she told me, please win for us. And... Mm. Uh, um, I felt responsible and I felt pressured somehow, um, mm. but I, I was I was feeling um, um, that I'm presenting not just myself, not just Presto. I'm, I'm present I'm presenting the Egyptian community, and that mm. felt great. Um, so um, I'm really proud of myself and my team mm. and what we have accomplished. Not. Uh, not just um, um, that we are not operating in Cairo, the, the big city and the, the the capital city of Egypt. You are operating from Upper Egypt, from the underserved communities, and we and we managed to make an impact. We managed mm -hmm. to uh, to tell people that we we can do uh, a lot of things and we can solve our problem society. No matter mm -hmm. uh, where where are we operating, where are we come from. Uh, we still can surround ourselves with people sharing the same values, and by that we we can um, we can help each other uh, and gather together to solve our pro problems and make impact in a lot of people's lives. Mm, fantastic, 
Oh, that's powerful, powerful. Yeah. Now, Ale, you only applied for this great grand prize in March of 2020. That's just around the beginning of lockdown for us in South Africa. I think at the end of March, we were in lockdown. Now, um, give our viewers a sense of what the application process entailed and also, you know, what you intend to do with this uh, $25,000. Yeah, yeah. Um, I applied in March 2020. Uh, it was uh, after my sister's wedding. <laughs> uh, and it was in the start of our curfew also. Uh, so uh, the application uh, focuses on the entrepreneur himself, not just other like uh, other like competitions I applied for um, before, uh, they, uh, they were focusing on me, on the entrepreneur himself and his venture. Uh, they were asking about my previous experience, at my, uh, the leadership skills. Um, the application was logical and uh, it helped me to, to look back through what, uh, what I have done in my, in my life. Uh, it wasn't the, um, the, the kind of boring application you don't want to fill. No, oh. you, you, uh, you are curious about, uh, about the process and, um, and the application was really detailed and... Um, and, uh, and make you um, make you represent yourself and your venture in um, um, in a professional way. Uh, followed by that, uh, I think in July I had an interview. Uh, it was an, a thirty minute phone phone interview. Uh, I was um, I was prepared for this interview, and I was telling myself. You can do it. You can be. Uh, you can be in the next step. However, it's fifty finalists, twenty finalists, but you wow. can go through it. Um, after that, uh, I received an email that I was one of the fifty finalists, and you have to do some assignments. It was a huge assignment, but it was really uh, fun and insightful. Uh, it was like making your strategic plan, mm -hmm. asking you all uh, all things about your venture, your business model, and uh, how you how you make money. Uh, what what are what uh, what are your revenues? Um, after that, it was uh, a due diligence visit. They they uh, they um, they visit me and my venture at my home to. Um, uh, to test things uh, in uh, in the ground and to see that uh, we, we are we are really uh, working and uh, everything is uh, is according to the application and to uh, the due diligence and uh, to the assignment. Um, so uh, the whole process shows that the ambitious team are making great work and they are really hard working and every step is built for something. Mm. Nothing is uh, spontaneous. Uh, and uh, everything uh, makes you feel that you are prepared for something bigger. Mm. Uh, then I, uh, it was announced that uh, the 20 finalists were selected from uh, 112 applications. That wow. was really great. Uh, I was in first a bit sad because it was a virtual experience. Mm. I, uh, I, I was hoping that uh, I come to South Africa and visit um, uh, and visit another country in Africa. I was really hoping for that. Uh, um, but seeing the preparation and, and attending the virtual camp, it was um, really exceptional for me and it was uh, beyond my expectations. Um, Usually, I don't like the, the virtual experience. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't like sitting on in the laptop and attending meetings. That mm -hmm. that's really stressful for me. Uh, but the uh, the virtual camp was really great. It, it was really beyond my expectations at all. I enjoyed every little bit of it, wow. and the the fun activities were done. We we made parties and we raised together and uh, the. Um, the spirit we had, it was like we are with each other. That the only thing, thing missing that we hang out together, guys. And I, I'm really sure that I will meet all my fellows and meet the Anzisha team and meet you guys oh. after all of this gone. Um, but um, 
I really liked the whole experience from the application till the announcement and the gala event. So what are you going to do with the money, Hala? Okay, uh, first we will work on sustaining our business and reach more customers in uh, Minya because uh, after the, the COVID-19, a lot of people uh, already shifted to uh, the online platforms and providing delivery service to their customers. So our revenues uh, grow and there are a lot of people need us. Uh, so we will work on sustaining our business more in Minya and the new Minya. Then we will be expanding to uh, more two more cities, empowering uh, an estimation of uh, 600 businesses and hiring more than 300 delivery agents to deliver the orders to the customers. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Incredible. Amazing. Yeah, thanks. I love for sharing that experience with us um, on your journey with the with with the with the and she's uh, and I mean just your positivity um, is just really contagious and um, just you know just just your motivation and and and, and positivity are really really powerful and um, thanks for sharing that experience with us. I'm curious to know from you um, how did you share with share with us a bit about your entrepreneurial journey? How did you decide to get into business? Uh, okay, um, I like entrepreneurship and uh, making businesses and small projects uh, since I was 16. Um, so uh, I started joining uh, volunteering uh, activities uh, to um, to just participate in the society. Uh, I, I wasn't planning for anything. After that, I, I, I found my passion in uh, entrepreneurship. And I started my first initiative when I was 17. Uh, um, it was for empowering young youth and uh, teenagers to help them uh, find their talents. We were helping each other to uh, learn uh, about uh, web development, Android, drawing, painting, anything we don't study in the high school mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to help us choose uh, our career and to uh, to get the right choice for the college uh, because uh, in Egypt you just study what you uh, uh, what you have in in the schools you you don't have any other um, uh, okay any other uh, window to uh, to see what uh, um, what the world has mm -hmm. so every one of us was already have a talent or or uh, or working on himself uh, separately to uh, to study something. So we we just share this. Um, uh, we just share this uh, information. We just share this um, this passion about learning anything. When you have someone to study uh, anything with you, that makes that the journey more easier and more fun. Oh. Um, after that, me and my uh, co-founders. Uh, I was working on as a community manager on uh, on uh, cloud quirky space. It, it's like our business hub in Mania. Uh, so I I already knew my co-founders in uh, in cloud, and we were working with each other in separate projects before. Uh, so we joined the hackathon, and uh, it's called Dries Up Hackathon. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my uh, and my co-founders, we. Um, we needed someone uh, on design, someone working on in, on business, someone working on uh, um, on web development to uh, to make uh, to make the product. So we we gather together to know what we need in our community. Mm -hmm. So um, okay, let me tell you a story about a friend of mine. She was the inspiration of our project. Uh, her name is Asma. She loves to make bakeries and food. So she started her business at home by selling uh, homemade uh, bakeries and food. Mm -hmm. uh, she made a Facebook group, told people about it. She got a bunch of customers and people loved her product. But she couldn't afford to hire a delivery agent to deliver the order to her customers because of the high cost. So mm -hmm. she dedicated one day in the week where she hops in a taxi and delivers every product by herself door by door. Mm -hmm. And because of that, she could only work one day every week mm. as she had to deliver everything fresh. Uh, there were 
a lot of people in our society working on projects like ESMA. And in the underserved communities, after searching, we found 2 million uh, Egyptian uh, underserved um, uh, small businesses and individual distributors uh, working on the same industry. Mm -hmm. And the lack of delivery infrastructure, they can't, uh, the, the, um, they can't afford hiring a delivery agent for, the, for themselves because of the high cost and their revenues are not that high. Uh, so we came up with the idea and started this thing, and we found a, a lot of a lot of people in need of this service. Uh, we won the the third place in the hackathon, uh, and we decided to complete to complete the the, the journey with each other. And um, after testing and MVP and all of this process, we came on the ground uh, providing a delivery service for individual distributors and anyone who in need for delivery service for his business. So how are you, how are you doing your delivery service, Ella? Are you using vehicles? Are you using motorbikes? Uh, are you subcontracting, um, you know, logistics people already? How, what's, your, what's your business model? Okay, uh, our business model, we hire uh, delivery agents as freelancers, like the model of Uber. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can, uh, you are, you as a delivery agent can book uh, any time you want uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to work with us. If you have a bike, motorcycle, anything can deliver the order. Mm -hmm. uh, and we take a flat rate delivery fees from uh, every transaction and the transaction fees from every vendor according to their order's volume. According to their own, the, to their orders volume, the transaction okay, the volume. Is, is okay. orders. Mm. Yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah, the volume of orders. We're yeah. going to learn some Arabic as well if you give us the chance. I love Arabic. Okay, this is look. You really know your business inside out, and it's quite inspiring for me. And you're so young, so we really salute you. Now, um, you indicated there's an article that I read about you, Hala, where you talked about the fact that before the Anzisha uh, Prize, that you had no network in Africa and that you were also not aware of the large and exceptional talents that existed on the continent. Can you share with our viewers why that was the case and also give us a sense of what your African network now looks like? Okay, great. Um, as I said in the article, uh, I I wasn't have a lot of connections in Africa. Um, I didn't visit any country uh, wow. outside Egypt uh, till now, and um, I, I I'm working on Upper Egypt. Uh, as you know, that the, the ecosystem uh, in in Upper Egypt is not as strong as the, 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 the capital city. Uh, the capital cities like Cairo or, or Alexandria, uh, the Upper Egypt communities are uh, underserved, so we don't have a big ecosystem yet. Um, uh, so, uh, and I was focusing on, on the product uh, and I, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't giving so much attention to, to build my network uh, all over the countries. Uh, but when I joined Anzisha, uh, I found people in my cohort suffering from the same problem I'm solving. Uh, I found uh, uh, um, in Uganda, he's selling groceries uh, and fresh uh, products. We have uh, the same customers in Egypt and we are helping them. And I see Paul suffering from the exact same problem and he is in need uh, for someone providing the same service. And in Singal, uh, in Malawi, um, and everyone is making um, a lot of efforts to, 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 provide the, to provide his product and they are so entrepreneurial and they, they have great mindset. And I know if we work together, we are, we, we are going to make something wow. Mm. Um, so uh, after after Anzisha, I know I know if I if I want to expand to any other uh, African country, uh, I will I will need I will need um, I will need help, and I will find a lot of people to help me, not just in my cohort, 
all of the Anzisha team and uh, the, the other cohorts and uh, the, the African Leadership Academy and all this community. Uh, they, they showed us a lot of help in, uh, in, in the camp. Uh, and, um, and the community lasts. It's not just for, for the, the 10 days camp. Mm -hmm. We still have a, a, a fellowship to to um, uh, uh, to uh, um, okay to to go to go through together and um, I loved I loved that I find uh, that I'm not alone mm -hmm. uh, and um, if uh, if I'm stuck in anything I can find someone to um, to discuss my problems with. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not just uh, s someone in uh, in your country or in your city. It's it's an international and uh, an African spirit. Um, mm -hmm. I really loved the, this spirit, and I was so sad at the end of the camp mm -hmm. uh, because um, the, the warm I I get from them, and mm -hmm. that we all in need for each other, and we all happy and sharing the same mindset. I know that is going to last and I know they are going to be there for me if I want to go to any city and then the network is everything mm. and having people around you is everything. That's, that's the actual word, not the grand prize, but being part of this great community. Mm, that's absolutely Fantastic. beautiful. <laughs> I mean, here at Afrospace, we are passionate about Pan-Africanism and uh, just br building unity across us as Africans and just hearing your experience is uh, just so encouraging and just shows us that indeed we are on the right path as a continent to coming together and building our ecosystems to make our continent a better place. So we're excited for you on that journey. Um, tell us. Yeah, a you, are about making, your... you are making a great. Uh, I was just telling you that you are making a great work of connecting uh, the, the, the news of all Africa uh, mm -hmm. because um, that makes us feel that, that the kind of worm I was telling you about. Oh, that's fantastic. Absolutely. Thank you. We, are, we are trying to bring all our stories onto one platform and um, make sure everybody's represented and we're learning from each other because we only have each other as Africans, right? I want to know, uh, Ella, last, my last question to you is going to, um, you know, I'm curious about your experience as a female uh, in, in entrepreneurship. Um, can you share with us your experiences of, of being a female entrepreneur? Uh, have you had to, you know, work 10 times harder than your male counterparts? Uh, or, you know, are you finding that, you know, you, there's, you're getting the same reception and, and people taking you as seriously as they would a male entrepreneur? What's been your journey? Um, okay. Uh, for the um, aspect of being a female uh, entrepreneur, um, I think that the, the, the most difficult thing I'm having is uh, the, the idea of uh, traveling um, and uh, going uh, through other cities and going uh, outside the country. Uh, I think um, uh, because because of my family also that they, yeah. they don't accept that uh, so much. Um, you you um, you can't travel alone. You can't uh, go to these things alone. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, I see when uh, people start seeing you making uh, something and making an impact and you are really changing people's lives, um, they start taking you seriously and they start uh, believing in you and they're giving you the trust and the confidence to, uh, to go through uh, the journey. Uh, at, at the beginning, you uh, you will find yourself as an entrepreneur or a female entrepreneur surrounded by a lot of pressure and uh, a lot of uh, yes or no. And uh, being a, being a young entrepreneur, you still uh, you still living with your parents. Uh, you um, you have to take uh, their acceptance in everything. Um, and that's that kind is. Um, it's really hard at the beginning, but uh, 
uh, anyone anyone will will give you uh, will give you the, the acceptance and the confidence and everything when you, when you, uh, you when you prove yourself when you prove that you you can uh, make a difference and that the um, um the ultimate advice is surround yourself with a supporting system or people cheering with the, the same values and the same mindset because when you when you feel that you are alone uh, mm. people can get you and uh, um, you will feel um, you will feel depressed and stuck and you you can't uh, you can't uh, go through the journey alone so i'm i'm grateful for having uh, uh, co-founders with me uh, i i couldn't do anything without them um, okay all of them are men I, i'm the only uh, I'm, I'm the only female one but <laughs> they were really supportive and um, and they understand that there is a difference between me and them the uh, and um, uh, and they uh, encourage me and uh, help me to to, um, uh, to to become a better person uh, I think that the, the problem I faced it was the age stereotype I, I was it uh, it was also the gender stereotype with it when you are dealing with elder people to, to present your uh, your service for them I can help you with the delivery service they can't take you seriously at the beginning uh, and they refuse to, to give you uh, their ears uh, so um um, as, as I told you, when people start saying that you are you are help for them, okay, I, I'm the one that providing the service for you. You have to respect me now, and I'm talking professionally with you. So um, that that was uh, the, the the problem I faced at the beginning, uh, and um, and uh, as I told you, so the social rejection and everything with dealing with the stress or, or self doubt. Uh, the um, the answer is the supporting system mm, because right. you you will face these uh, problems and mm. um, you you will have time when you are down and you don't mm. want to get out of your bed mm. um, but having support system and uh, co-founders and team that uh, having the same mindset will help you go through the process. Mm. Great. Allah, you've answered, look, the question I wanted to pose to you, you've probably answered it in another way about your net, through your networks. But I'll pose this question to you as a final question, because I think it's important. And I think also for Africa, and I know that North Africa doesn't get as much oxygen as the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa, like Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, and so on. But I do know that Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, and Egypt are countries with big populations, and they're also very uh, resource rich, and they're also well integrated, what you call the Maghreb region. Mm -hmm. So I also know about the Sawiris brothers, mm -hmm. the Sawiris, you know, the Sawiris brothers, the four yeah. guys, the billionaires from Egypt. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to ask you is firstly, who is your role model in terms of business that you look up to, whether they're in Egypt or anywhere else, or America, or whatever? And also, what advice do you have for those who are coming after you, the ones who started the way you started? What advice do you have for them? So that's, that's my final question. Okay, uh, for the uh, for the role model question, I get this question a lot, and I don't have an answer for this question. <laughs> I um, I look at every story and ad I admire something. Uh, every small accomplishment and every great accomplishment have a side of the story you can learn from, and you can see yourself through this. And uh, by that, you are learning and you are willing to uh, become a better person. Uh, but um, I don't have a role model, so I don't have an answer for this question. Okay. Uh, and for the, uh, the advice, okay, my advice is... Um, is for people who are coming from uh, underserved communities and they think they don't have resources. Mm -hmm. uh, because I was one of these guys. 
uh, and um, my advice for them that um, you are not alone. You are not alone at all. You uh, you will you will think that you are, and you um, you will find yourself uh, not feeling listened and not feeling uh, and feeling rejected. Mm. Um, but you have to, to start searching. You have to, to make an extra effort, an extra effort uh, um, more than the, the other one who are, who are living in a resourceful uh, area. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to make an extra effort. That's mm-hmm. the only thing you have to do. And the extra effort you have to do is, is the searching, searching for people like you mm-hmm. and searching for um for communities like Anzisha or or communities uh, like a cloud that I was uh, working on uh, it, it it's going to be hard but uh, trust me when you will find yourself surround you will feel warm and you are going to make a lot of accomplish than anyone else and uh, you will and you will see that all of your efforts pay off and mm-hmm. Uh, you will feel the kind of satisfaction mm. you are searching for all, all all your life, and that's what that what that will make you uh, go more forward and forward, and uh, you will help other people to go through the same journey. And after that, I think. Um, in the presence of Anzisha and the initiatives like Anzisha, um, I think soon you know, we will find uh, every spot in Africa have people uh, to help them in their entrepreneurial journey. And uh, people uh, will no longer feel neglected. I think in the next 10 years, we, uh, we will not find young people suffering from the same... Um, the same problems we already faced, me or my other fellows or anyone going f- through the same process, we uh, will be more more empowered and we will feel uh, the community around us. Wow. Thank you so much. That's very, very, very inspirational advice for those who are coming. Mm. They say that there must always, the pioneers are the ones who suffer the most. So, yeah, we, we, we are so proud of what you've achieved. And we thank you for joining us on Afro Space. Nyasha. Yeah, I mean, uh, Allah, just to weigh in on your advice, I also thought it was really brilliant. Um, and just allowing people to understand that the opportunities that don't seem like are available sometimes just require us to search harder. And um, of course, it's not easy, but it really tells us and based on your own achievements that there is a place and a space that everybody can find, you know, that fulfillment and the thing that they need to do with their lives. And um, thanks for that great encouragement and um, just reminding us that again. And uh, it is all the time we had today for Afro Space. Thank you again for coming. And uh, I will start off by saying my farewells and I will say bye to you in my local language. That's Shona and that is Sarai Shakanaka. Salam. Okay. And from me, Adetunji, I'm going to say goodbye in three Nigerian languages. So in Yoruba, it's Odabo. In Igbo, it's Kachifo. And in Aousa, it's Seigobe. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to say in my own language also. It's salam. 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 So we'll see you in Minya. Maybe when this COVID runs away, we'll come yeah, to yeah, Minya. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, look, you, I, lo- I love your country so much. I know a little bit about your history, the from the pharaohs to the mm. Anwar Sadats and uh, all the yeah. great Egyptians and... I just love Egypt. I just love the story of Egypt. Very fascinating. I read about ancient civilization, Egypt, you know, all of that. It's such a pleasure to see that an Egyptian, a young Egyptian is the one who is at the top of business in Africa, especially in terms of the service that you provide, because we don't hear, we tend to hear too many stories from Europe and America 
but Africa, we have 55 countries. And so we're very proud of you as an African who is doing great things. And please extend our compliments to your family, who I'm sure they would have given you support on this journey. And also to your friends, uh, your co-founder, I believe is Talib, is also now my friend on LinkedIn, Talib. And thank you for accepting my friendship on LinkedIn so quickly without having to wait for weeks before you allow me into your world. Thank you. Uh, I'm really happy for, uh, about this interview. I'm really happy that I had it and I'm really happy that I accepted you <laughs> on LinkedIn to have this interview. I really enjoyed the, my time and this 45 minutes, I think. <laughs> and I I hope to see you guys in Egypt or in Nigeria or in South Africa. Yeah. And we can <laughs> we can pop in each other on any country in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And also from our side, uh, Allah, if we, you know, we are connected everywhere because obviously experience, travel, knowledge of things. So if we do get any opportunity to support your business or a contact, mm -hmm. we'll pass them along because Thank we you. believe that we have to grow each other. And if you also know any Egyptians or friends in your cohort, uh, you feel that even though they might not have won the grand prize, I know there was a number two and the number three, that we can ventilate what they do. And I know they're from different countries as well. You can pass on their contacts to us. You now have our email addresses. We would love to celebrate young people. We, we love young people so much. Okay. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Au revoir. Au revoir. Shining Au revoir. bright. Cheers, then. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you, Bye. Nanyasha. Thanks, Have a wonderful Jenny. day. All right, too. God bye. bless. Thank you. Bye bye.